committee. He has a lot of experience there being on that committee and the chairperson now, so I think that uh, it should have been. Um, good governance, as, as, as has been said, has, there has to be accountability and there has to be transparency. And I want to echo what um, Deputy Pingle just said. You know, I sat on the county council for almost 10 years and it's the same way. I mean, you just don't get answers and you don't, and then if you start asking questions, you're blacklisted and you're kind of you're a nuisance and you're not a, not a good point in the class. And, um, you know, you'll, you'll be told to even by some officials later on, look, change your attitude, you're a nice hint or else you won't get any kind of services in a subtle way. But that's wrong. That's, we're elected by the people to represent them and to, 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 to bring up any of the issues. And accountability has to be a big one because five million almost was spent in the, in the years that was, that was uh, five billion per year at the time before um, Minister Rabbit, uh, didn't, uh, Minister Rabbit uh, did his report. And that's a huge amount of money. I think it's down to four and a half billion this year. And there are anomalies, there are um, shortcomings. And we all have those, unfortunately, but there's no accountability. And the county manager is all powerful. And uh, really then what, 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 what um, sticks to people's craw altogether is, is um, when the county managers and senior officials, when they retire, young enough now with big packages, they're back the day after in a consultancy role and they're back advising the county, another county council, how to amalgamate or whatever. This is not good enough. With 450,000 people unemployed, why do we have to go back to senior department officials who are retired? senior county managers or assistant managers who are retired to come back to do reviews or to do whatever. It's a gravy train and it's not good enough and, it's, and, and it, should be, it should be outed and it has to be outed because there are thousands of people well qualified in the country to deal with those issues. I want to just say that um, um, the NRA and of course as well do, um, do I'm not going to work with senior officials in the council and they are, you can't talk to them. They are the real gods on high and I have likened them a number of times I said we got rid of the IRA and now we have the NRA. And I mean that because they're just untouchable. You can't engage with them, you can't talk to them. As I said, they built a motorway, a fine, mo fine motorway certainly, but uh, without any rest areas, any thoughts, wouldn't listen to anybody. And they consumed large uh, parts of land in my constituency that they didn't want at all. And we're damned now, year in, year out, with, um, I won't call them travellers or not, they're, they're seasonal traders who come along and Destroy, upset everybody because they took acres and acres that they never needed and why are they allowed to buy the land that they all CPO'd and bought for and bought dearly and I said they had nearly enough land to do two roads but no accountability why did you take it why that oh road, you have to talk to the design team and this that and the other there is a problem there. anyone traveling from Dublin to the Cork now will know there's a problem with a part of the motorway um, just on the border of Tipperary and Limerick and I have asked What's the problem? It's closed, one lane is closed at the moment and the repair works. And what's the problem? I was told to drainage and I was told to suffer some. We don't know. I mean, that road, was, and I said, who's going to pay for it? Because that road was built by a contractor, a fine job, uh, delivered on time and under budget. So is there a guarantee and will the county council have to pay for it? Or who has to pay for it? And it, should be a, it, should, it shouldn't be a matter of guesswork and you're trying to fi find out. Go on to the water where Minister Hogan is, you know, household char uh, water charges and septic tank issues, whatever else. Consultants, again, we have a village in my, in my, in my um, area who are badly needed a sewer treatment plant, village of Grange Mokler. I was delighted in, in November 2010 when there was, um, when there was um, um, 1.2 million allocated for it. Um, but we can't get the work done. It has to go to consultants, more consultants, even though a private developer was, had bought land there, had designed a scheme of houses, had designed a sewer treatment plant, every step of the way in conjunction with the county council. Well, conjunction is probably the wrong word. He did it, but he all the time had pre plannings and consulted with the county council and you do this and do that. In fact, they told him to take it over and, and they put a stipulation in the, in the grant of planning that if he hadn't it done by a certain date, the council would do it themselves. He has those plans now. Cost a lot of money. I'm not saying they're perfect, but the council refused to take them on board. No, they put out a tender for more consultants to come in and design a scheme. And the money's sitting there waiting, it's, it's, it's taxpayers' money, while, you know what happens, everything's going into the river, it's, 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 it's an outrage. Because surely if that scheme was designed with the county council engineers, and properly designed now, it's not, uh, it's not a, a penny hippie job, these are qualified architects and, and design people, and the spec is top class and it's there, and it's needed. And, and to try and, <coughs> I've tried to get into the topic debate here, to try and get that moved on. It's there ready-made. 
I'm not saying that you, can, that you have to go out tender process or whatever, but they're tendering now for consultants. And I believe then one of the consultants who didn't get the job is after objecting. Because he probably had a cosy little patch there and he, he's wondering now why somebody else got it. And still, with no, with no money, no, no, no action on the ground, and we're waiting for that. So the backlog that's there and the, the, the damage the consultants' industry is doing, because when I joined the County Council in, 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 um, two, in uh, 2000, 2000 uh, sorry, in 1991, there was a county manager, county engineer, county secretary, and there was area engineers. And they ran the, they ran the council. Now you have a county manager, six director of services, and senior people underneath, underneath them as well. You have all chiefs and no Indians. The whole staff from the ground have been stripped. And indeed, uh, the staff in the offices who do good work and work hard at the ordinary officials who, who, who had to pay the pension levy at the time it came in. And uh, the, the, the only people exempt from it were the director of services and the county manager. Because Minister Linehan, it would be good to know, um, would back up the decision to, take, to, to, to put a pension levy on those, on those earners. And there's a group right across the country uh, at a certain level. And when I questioned you, the total was only um, 60 or 70, but there was seven or 800 of them. And they don't pay it at all. And the ordinary staff on the ground who earn the bonuses that these people get at the top. It's rotten to the core, and it's unfair. So I think that the whole area that Deputy McGuinness's bill is, 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 is badly wanted, badly needed, and get some accountability. And like he said himself, we get to stick for not with the waste and things happen, and we have no control over it. And we should have control. Control has to be brought back to this base and take it away from the, uh, the, the, the advisors, senior officials, and someone will treat you with contempt. Some very good people, obviously, and decent people, but someone will treat you with contempt. And they can't literally, they can't literally move a, a bend in the road now without getting consultants to design it. It's just shameful. It's a racket, and it needs to be exposed. Because it's a, it's a great, as Deputy Pingel said, it's a gravy train. And literally, there was no such thing as a consultant, as I said, back in, back in um, 1991. The engineers did their work. Now, if they want to build a scheme of houses in the village, when they were building them, five or six or maybe ten council houses, they'd get a consultant, they'd put it out for tender, and consultant will design them. If they want to build five more in the next village, they'd go out for tender again and get different consultants. It just has to stop, because that's nonsense. I know you can't lift the design from one village to the next, but surely the design should be pretty basic and you'll tweak it, but you don't have to get uh, a whole process of consultants again. I'm at a, trying to move on a water scheme, uh, the Burnt Court and, 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 and uh, Federal Region water schemes, with 20 years. Since 1988, there was money approved for it, money approved for it, and it still hasn't the shovel gone into the ground. And people had to tell me if, if they, they're not going to pay any water charges because the water, they've noticed the bile almost every, almost 10 months of the year. And the water, you, you couldn't drink it. And here we are, consultants do a design up to the department. Six months, they look at it there, probably getting more consultants, I don't know. Send it back down again. And well, I don't know, Minister, but whoever looks at it, I don't know. I, I, I can't say, and I, I take your word for it. Back down again, consultants have to do another design, build and operate. It's just a moving paper from here to there, just to find their existence and nothing happening. Only the waste of money that's, that's approved to go for projects and is never spent. And then you, look, you inquire where the money's still there. Oh, you know, we to hire consultants and we have to do this report and that report. And the money's gone and nothing done, nothing done on the ground. It's beyond a joke. Someone needs to look at it. I think this is an ideal bill that, uh, that it could be examined on. You've seen the different issues in, I mean, take, take, the hospital and, uh, take the hospital, children's hospital. How anyone could spend that kind of money? And how the consultants or whoever design people could go to that travel design without knowing that they're going to get knocked back? Because there's such a thing as pre-planning. For any kind of, you're building a house, you're required to, you're encouraged to do pre-planning. And how they could spend that kind, waste that kind of money? No, with, to carry on with a project, the height it was, and I only know from what I read about it, knowing that it wasn't going to get passed. And all the money gone. We well, should make us believe so that they didn't cop on it. Can we not get some kind of a, um, an ind indicative reply from the, from the board panel or whatever, council, double council officials, that this won't do? But no, it's grand. Let's we'll roll on, we'll design it. And, and the same, and it was still talking about looking for sites and everything else. And it just goes on in every county and it goes on in every, 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 every uh, town council again. I didn't, uh, and there's no, no accountability. I didn't, uh, and I'll sit down after this, um, Chairman. I had an incident uh, two years ago uh, where I sent out a number of texts wishing people a happy new year. I got a most obnoxious text back from a, a town clerk and I, I brought it to the county, man the county the town manager. And he said, what do you expect me to do it? It was a threat. I said, and you his boss. 
I just told me to go away. There's no accountability. No accountability. And, and that's happening. And uh, at the time I was in this house, not a member, but, but I'm still, as I said, we have, a, we, we have a working relationship with the county council and we have to have it. So I believe this uh, piece of legislation is timely, long overdue, and I'm disappointed, Minister, that you didn't just take it and for us all his deep fakes and whatever and send it to the committee where we add and delete and discuss it and you have your officials in, department officials can deal with it and whatever because as I said, member, ordinary members here don't have any resources to research these bills only what they have themselves and their, uh, their PA and their secretary and uh, some maybe voluntary help and we're not able to match what is in the department but sometimes I think we nearly could because there's common sense where we're concerned a lot of the time and the common sense seems to uh, get very uh, phased and very, very, very um, convoluted when it goes into these and then we have to get into consultants. So it's time to cry hard to the consultants. Uh, uh, another issue in Tiberiary where a road was being done after 40 years waiting to get it done and 120,000 spent on it. Fine job. Night's rain came, the whole lot was gone. And big investigation to find out what was the cause of this. And they came back with a report saying that it could have been the chips, the tire chips were dirty, could have been the, the tire wasn't the right temperature, or it could have been the, the, the wet mix wasn't the right uh, temperature or quality either, and it could have been the mechanical operator of the machine. And then, go away, don't be asking any more questions. I mean, after all that, someone had to take responsibility for these issues. And just, it's not because uh, it had the road had to be done, redone again the next year, that meant that other roads that were in, in the line to be done had to wait even longer. But to waste, and no accountability, none whatsoever. And you, you just to blame four or five different, different matters. If that was a private contractor doing that job, you have to redo it at his own expense and proper order because we just can't continue uh, uh, to have the waste that's going on. And when uh, people like Deputy McGuinness are making a reasonable effort here to, 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 to discuss something like this, two minutes remaining. Well, my God, they should be, uh, they should be uh, accepted. And to go back to the, even the attendance today, Minister, I mean, the technical group was by far the biggest group here in the small was started, and we're one of the smallest groups. And your own benches are pretty, pretty, pretty. So lip services. I, I'm saying now. I'm saying the small thing was started. I'm saying there was only four minutes. There was at least 20. This out of 18 in this side. And maybe I didn't count of 15 anyway. I'm just making the point. It's lip service. This Friday sittings because they're not meaningful. If you you can't have a vote either, and you know other business, and then we'll come back next Tuesday and 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 vote on it. And the bills, as I said, are being rejected out of hand, we, uh, month in, month out, every Friday sitting, and that doesn't augur well. And I'm not saying that you accept everything that comes on this side of the house, but surely, as I said, take it as a work in progress document and put it to the committee and uh, dress it up or dress it down or whatever, and don't let it near the consultants, so keep them away from it because they'll definitely get convoluted in. And because they're going to protect their own skin. And they have the contacts in the county councils, and they have the whole lot, merry-go-round, nice cosy cartel, it needs to be unshackled, unbuckled, broken, because, and I can't understand how the Troika and these people are, are in here literally crucifying us. They can't see this waste, and they can't expose this waste that's going on uh, uh, on a daily basis, and it's allowed to continue. So I'll finish, and I, I just, as I said, um, Chairman, thank you for your indulgence. I commend uh, Deputy McGuinness for the work he did on it, and I'm disappointed that it's not uh, been accepted. Remarkable. Thank you very much, Deputy. Um, Deputy uh, Murphy. Thank you, Chair. This is the sort of bill that, that should be put to a free vote. I do agree with that. I don't see the danger in doing that. I do think the government needs to loosen its grip on this chamber, particularly in areas such as this where we agree with so much. Uh, I'm a member of the Public Accounts Committee, and I very much support the thrust of this bill. We investigate the spend of public money. That's the role of the Public Accounts Committee, to, to see where the money goes and to see if we're getting value for money on behalf of the taxpayers. But when it comes to local authorities, our role ends, and that's not acceptable, because that is public money, it is taxpayers' money, and we as a Public Accounts Committee should have the ability to see how that money is being spent. Now, a central element of Deputy McGuinness's bill is Section 2, which is introducing a new Section 5A, and, and I do support that principle. Every year, 5 billion euro of taxpayers' money goes from central government funding to local authorities, and we can't follow it, it's very frustrating. And one of the most frustrating experiences I've had in the Dáil since I was elected was on the Public Accounts Committee when we were investigating spend of money on the pool bag incinerator. And we had the Secretary General from the Department of Environment in, and in a lengthy exchange, both myself and Deputy McGuinness uh, questioned her on how the money to date had been spent, and that money to date is more than 80 million. And still nothing has been built. And when we went through the, the, 
the very rough breakdown that we received from the department as to how that money had been spent, and this was um, supplied to me by Councillor Paddy McCartan, we see that client representative services, just under 26 million. Other consultancy, just over 3 million. Legal fees, just under 2 million. And public relations, just over 4 million. What has that money been spent on? What is other consultancy at 3.3 million? What is that? What are client representative services at just under 26 million? And then again, public relations at just over 4 million for something that hasn't even been built. And when we quizzed the Secretary General on how that money had been spent, we got no answers. 43.7 million has been spent on land acquisition for that project. And we heard that the compulsory purchase orders that were done in 2010 were, were put at 2007 prices. That's ridiculous. And yet still we cannot investigate how that money was spent, why it was spent, and whether or not we got value for money. And as many people know, and Deputy Humphreys and myself, who are from the constituency know, we're not getting value for money here. But more importantly, the Public Accounts Committee cannot establish that. And what we've been told is, we will get a further breakdown of these figures, but we'll only get it after the final decision on this project has been made, which basically means when it's too late. When it's too late to determine that, you know, this is bad money being spent on a bad project, and when it's too late to stop further money being, being, being spent on what will be a failure and a catastrophe for the Dublin region and for the country. And that's not acceptable. So we do need to give the Public Accounts Committee and we do need to give the Controller and Auditor General more resources so that we can investigate the spend of money in local authorities. But, of course, if we are to give the CNHE greater resources or greater powers, we need to give it greater resources. And it's something that's come up time and time again in the Public Accounts Committee that the CNAG does not have sufficient resources to do its job, nor does the committee, nor do we as TDs. People expect more from us at the moment as elected representatives. They expect more from their door and they expect more from their committees and government. And that is right. We are in a time of crisis. We have a lot more work to do. But we are doing it at a time when our resources and the money that we can spend and the people that we have working in government is reduced. And it is creating difficulties. And we are encountering those difficulties week in, week out on the PAC. Yes, we need to, to, to make savings, and yes, there are huge savings to be made, particularly in this House. But are we making the correct savings? I'm not sure that we are. And that's something that does need to be looked at again and in a lot more detail. Because we are spreading our resources too thin. When we look at the Friday sittings, for example, people complained that we weren't sitting enough and that we weren't doing enough. So we decided that we would sit for one extra day a month. And now they're complaining because it costs too much. And the government needs to be above that kind of rubbish. I myself have had two bills published, and we haven't had a chance to debate them because we only take one Friday a month, and we only discuss one bill. And that needs to change as well. There's no reason why we could not be debating three bills today. The houses are open, people are working, the lights are on, the heating is on. We could be in here doing much more work and being much more efficient in our use of the time that we have here. So that does need to change. And I would urge the minister, who is here, to discuss with her colleagues in government and in cabinet to see how we can further progress the reforms that have already been brought in by this government. And I do welcome them, but we need to constantly go further. More reforms, make ourselves more efficient. You know, enable the, the new TDs that are here to do a better job. We were elected at a time of change. People do expect more of us. We want to do more. Yet we're finding it frustrating because the time isn't there and the resources aren't there. In relation to Section 5 of the bill, I very much welcome this section as well. I mean, one does suspect on the Public Accounts Committee that certain departments believe that if they simply ignore us, we will go away. And we won't. Uh, last October, it was revealed that there's a 3.6 billion accounting error in the Department of Finance. And the Public Accounts Committee investigated that. We were promised two reports. We're now drawing towards the end of May and we've seen nothing. That's not acceptable. So we do need to introduce something into legislation that would see that not only are the, the secretaries general of the different departments compelled to report to the Public Accounts Committee, but that when the Public Accounts Committee writes to a department, that they treat that with the utmost importance. And they do get back to us, and not get back to us in three or four months, but get back to us ideally within a week or two, but if not a week or two, no later than, than, than 30 days. I think that is an important principle, and I do welcome that part of the bill. But just to conclude, uh, Chair, uh, and to commend Deputy McGuinness on bringing this bill to the House. Um, you know, we've done a lot of work to date on the Public Accounts Committee. We have more to do. All we're asking for is the ability to, to do further work in the public interest, to ensure that taxpayers' money that's been spent by the local authorities is being spent correctly and that we are getting value for money. I don't think that's too much to ask. I know that Minister Hogan wants to bring in further reforms in this area, and I do welcome them. Uh, but unfortunately, I will not be supporting this bill. Thank you. Deputy, Deputy Humphreys. Thank you, Thank you Chair. Uh, 
First of all, I, I welcome the bill and I welcome the uh, time and effort that was put in by uh, the deputy in formulating it and the opportunity to debate. Uh, it was my intention uh, this morning coming down to actually to discuss or contribute to the bill, but listening to uh, Deputy Murphy and Deputy Pringle and Deputy McGrath, it brings home more and more uh, the accountability of local government and the uh, county manager or the city manager and the power of local government. Uh, Deputy Murphy brought up the element of the Pullback Peninsula and the 81 million that was spent there, and I, I watched with interest the Public Accounts Committee uh, when the Secretary General was in at the committee and, and, and the weakness of the response uh, uh, to that. But if, if, if you look at it carefully, and coming from a history uh, of local government, uh, I, I was first elected onto City Council in 99. Uh, and unlike what Deputy McGrath was saying earlier on about uh, the budget and the resistance, resisting councillors getting involved, I think in an awful lot of cases the powers that local councillors have, they don't exercise. Because one of the most powerful elements that you have is actually agreeing the budget. Uh, and that's really what you, you must get in there and contribute. And this element of officials elbow, elbowing you out of the way uh, Really, I would worry that if councillors would allow that to happen, because that's one of your fundamental powers, is the agreement of the, of the budget and holding the management and the officials to, to account. And I think we really, if, if, we, if we want more accountability on this 4.5 billion that's spent every year in local government, we really need to empower councillors to actually make that contribution and to hold, to hold management at a very low level accountable. Like one of the great frustrations that often is articulated to me by councillors is that you have an audit committee, yet it's laid down in legislation that an elected councillor can't chair that audit committee. They can be a member of the audit committee, but they can't chair the audit committee and steer it in the direction of the elements that they wish to audit it. And that, that has always come up as a frustration. But fundamentally, and I've come back to the element of the money that was spent in the Poolbeg Peninsula, the 81 million, and, and you know, money is being spent every month, every week on that project. And there isn't the power for the local council to actually stop it. We need to look at the powers that are being assigned to management. We must enhance the powers of local councillors. We must move the management and stop, move the word as a manager of a local authority to the CEO. And they're accountable and answerable. So, well, fundamentally, what I'm asking the Minister is actually to speed up the reform of local government. Actually, not to take any more powers away from local authorities, but to enhance the powers that they have. To enhance the powers of councillors to hold management to account. To hold management to account for every uh, euro they spend. Not like what Deputy Pringle has said, that happened in Donegal. And, and I, I actually worry that it was only one single councillor that was articulating the, uh, the amount of money that has been spent on, on a consultant about reorganising management. You know, and I, and I, I worry uh, what the other councillors were actually doing. You know, you know, each role in government has a responsibility. Uh, with that responsibility, we have to ensure from this House that those councillors have the power to use the responsibility and hold the management to account. So, by, as a government deputy, I, I will not be supporting the bill. I actually really want to uh, thank the deputy for, br for bringing it to the House, to having an opportunity to have an input. Uh, and I don't undervalue the Friday sittings. I, I, one of the deputies that have been here at every single uh, sitting, and I think at, at this stage I've actually contributed uh, each Friday uh, that we've sat on, on the bills that come forward. And I think some of them have been excellent. And I think this is an, another excellent bill that you know, the direction and the ideas need to be taken on board and worked back into the system. And Minister, I would ask you to take those, those sound ideas that, were, that are in this bill on board and let's see how we can progress them. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, Minister. Thank you very much, Deputy. I call now on the Minister. You have 15 minutes. Uh, thank you very much, Cahir Lig. And um, I also, again, would like to reiterate um, my thanks to Deputy McGuinness for bringing this bill before the House and indeed to all of the deputies who have contributed to the debate, which I, I believe has been a very good, strong debate with lots of very good ideas from all side of the, sides of the House. And I think a general agreement that what we all want to achieve is better accountability, better transparency, better value for money. 
uh, with regard to the expenditure of public funds right across the system, and I don't think anybody in this House would disagree with that. Um, I suppose the fundamental difficulty um, with Deputy McGuinness's bill, and this is not rejecting it just for rejection's sake, but what it does present, and I don't think this could just be tweaked at committee stage, is a duplication of the audit of local government services. It is a duplication. And essentially, as I said in my opening statement, what we're trying to achieve is overall reform. And part of that is a review of the possible merger of the Office of the Controller and Auditor General and the local government audit system. So I think if that happens, that that will achieve, um, at least to some extent, uh, uh, the substance of what Deputy McGuinness um, is looking for in this bill. Um, so this is not rejection for rejection's sake, and I want to put that on the record. And also, I do believe that the Friday decisions are very useful. I've been a member of this House since 1998, and it was very difficult. I was in opposition for most of that time. And it was very difficult to get a private member's bill um, discussed uh, in any way in the House um, up to very recently. Um, I happen to be one of the members who got a private member's bill accepted by a minister, a Fianna Fáil minister. Um, but that was very rare. Um, and um, I, I think this does add, add to the contribution of all members of the House. Um, I suppose I'm also somewhat concerned at um, some of what's arisen here, where there seems to be a feeling that, that local councillors um, can't scrutinise um, effectively. And I think Deputy, our Deputy Humphreys has, has just raised this concern. And the, some of the people here seem to think that, you know, if it's not scrutinised by the Public Accounts Committee, that there can be no democratic scrutiny of what happens in local government. And um, I, I, I think that's a very disturbing view, in fact. Um, uh, and I do believe that we need to give local councillors the power and the ability and the, the whatever they need to, to do proper scrutiny at local level. And Minister Hogan, uh, as Deputy Murphy says, is going to bring forward uh, recommendations on uh, local government reform very soon. Um, but just to cover that area about, uh, and dep uh, several deputies referred to the local audit, and I just wanted to, um, the local audit committees, and just to bring some clarity on their role. Um, local audit committees, um, they do add real value to corporate governments and local government. They normally comprise five members, three external members, including the chairperson, as Deputy Humphreys has, has said, it's not a councillor, and two councillors. They carry out their functions under a formal charter and are approved by the members. They also prepare annual reports of their work for consideration by the full council. And their oversight functions are to review the Council's financial and budgetary reporting practices and procedures, to foster the development of best practice in the internal audit function, including approval of the annual internal audit work plan and monitoring its delivery, request special reports for internal audit as considered appropriate, review local government auditors' reports and monitor follow-up actions, assess and promote value for money efficiency in the Council, consider whether processes are in place to manage risk effectively in accordance with organisational guidelines and business plans. And the local government auditor attends audit committee meetings in order to present his or her audit report and to clarify any matters arising from the report, which is in line with best corporate government's procedures. And these committees have contributed significantly in ensuring that issues raised by the local government auditors are addressed by, by the authorities. So um, I think you know, it's important that we understand the role of, of that audit committee. Um, and I mean, I would be quite disturbed at some of the contributions that Deputy McGrath and, and Deputy Pringle and others suggesting that somehow or other local councillors you know, can't question the manager or can't, can't raise these kinds of issues at local level. Um, I think it does point to you know, something wrong with our local democracy, if that's the case. And that's something that has to be addressed. Um, I suppose we're a relatively small country, and maybe you could say that the PAC could scrutinise local authorities, um, and you know, that is the central tenet of, of what Deputy McGuinness wants to achieve. But I do believe that, uh, you know, certainly in larger countries, um, you would have a lot more um, of this kind of work being done very effectively at local and regional level. And um, I think that's something that we as public representatives and people who were on local authorities, as I was as well for a long time, uh, would want to achieve. Um, so I think there's a lot of work to be done in that area. But um, just, I suppose, to return to Deputy McGuinness's bill, um, I do think this has been a very useful debate. I know Deputy McGuinness would have liked if the government had accepted the bill. Um, and I do think that um, you know, the, the issues raised are very important issues and ones that need to be addressed. But I do want to reiterate again that um, essentially there is duplication in the, in the course being uh, recommended by Deputy McGuinness. 
and um, again to reiterate the government's intention to pursue a, a reform agenda that um, is central, uh, the central tenets of which are value for money, transparency, accountability, and to ensure, uh, particularly at this time of, of the state's finances, that, uh, that no money goes astray, that we spend it wisely, and that it is scrutinised effectively at all levels of government. Carmichael. I now call on Deputy McGuinness. You have 15 minutes. Uh, Account Court, I firstly want to thank all of the speakers, those that spoke uh, in favour of the bill and those that spoke against the bill. I think that that type of exchange uh, is a healthy one and it can often result in a better bill uh, being, um, I suppose, decided on uh, by the House. I'm not disappointed for myself in relation to the fact that the government didn't take this bill. I'm disappointed for the members of the Public Accounts Committee who have time and time again expressed their interest and their support in achieving what is contained in that bill. Not in their interest, but in the interest of good governance. That is what they wanted to do. They simply wanted to do their job and extend their remit to cover local government audit and so on. They wanted to, ex to, to ask the minister, would he insist that accounting officers would have to respond to our requests or letters or correspondence or queries within 30 days? We simply asked that an annual report would be debated by this House so that we could, on a yearly basis, remind every accounting officer and every citizen that the Public Accounts Committee is doing its best on behalf of the people it represents and determined to achieve value for money in every respect of the spend of the state. There are hard-earned taxes that we collect, and yet we seem to have, don't have the bottle to ensure that they're spent correctly in the interest of the people that we serve. That is the disappointing part of this. You promised in government, and not being political about this, that this would happen, that this would happen. And I have to say, to you, Minister, these really are not your words. I, I know you, and this speech is not your speech. And I would say to you that there is no attempt to duplicate the work. There are 140 people, professionals, employed in the CNAG's office. There are 40 employed in local government. If this was a PLC, they would immediately be amalgamated to bring greater efficiency and a central effort to the work that they were doing. That's what would happen. That's what Ireland is doing outside the walls of this place. It is downsizing and is getting value for money for itself. Every business is doing it. And yet the state, on taxpayers' money, believes that what we, have to, that what we can do is just continue business as usual. It, can, it, can't, it can't be like that with public accounts. It can't be like that. You have heard examples of other councillors here and their view of what, what goes on. I'm not critical of councillors. I was one for 25 years. My father spent 50 years before me or with me on the council. I shared 25 of those years with him. I know a local government and I have rarely seen the county manager held to account. Rarely. Not because the councillors can't do it, but there's time and effort that must go into it. Similar to this bill here, I put time and effort into it. I considered what the opposition members of the Public Accounts Committee and others in this House had to say about these issues. I listened to their frustration and sometimes anger at questions that were avoided by accounting officers. Accounting officers talking down the clock, sending in replies that they promised too late and replies that actually meant nothing to the issue only to gain further time and hope that would be forgotten about. That's what we're dealing with on public accounts. But in spite of the bill not being taken, let me pledge to this House and to the members of the Public Accounts Committee that I will continue to do my utmost with every single accounting officer that comes before us to ensure that value for money is achieved and to ensure that we do really act as the watchdog for the taxpayer. That's a commitment that I will give. And I would ask Deputy Howland, in relation to the request that he made, 
to talk again about it. I've spoken to the accounting officer from Deputy Howland's department. I've spoken to Deputy Howland. He knows my views on a wide range of issues. I'm not interested in talking about it anymore, honestly. I'm interested in action that needs to be taken. Not for John, Mc John McGuinness. My name is peppered through the, the contributions that were made. This is not about me. This is about governance and about public accounts. And we're not doing our business properly at all, not by a long shot. The five billion that members talk about is five billion of taxpayers' money that goes into public accounts, directly voted from this House, that we cannot follow. We cannot follow. And I remind you of this again. Let me tell you this. 2007, 5.5 billion euro went to local government. How many value for money audit reports did they do on the collective spend of that amount of money? One. 2008, 5.7 billion euro of a spend. How many audits were done? Zero. None. No value for money audits done. 2009, 5.25 billion euro of a spend. How many audits were done? Sorry, not audits, but value for money reports and so on. One. One in all of that time. And time and time again, the CNAG has said, I should be allowed to at least follow the money. Follow the money to, to, to pull back, 81 million. And what answers and clarifications did we get? None. I asked that accounting officer to ensure, out of concern for taxpayers' money, and the effort that was made by the members of that committee, to ensure that she would ask the local government audit team to investigate the 81 million and then to report to the, CN to the Public Accounts Committee. I was told that she would have to ask for that report for herself first, and then it would be at her discretion to make it available to the CNAG and thereafter the Public Accounts Committee. Where is accountability there? Where is democracy there? Where is the interest in the citizen there? It just isn't. It is business as usual. Maybe not for you, but certainly for the civil servants and the accounting officers that I meet. And it cannot be tolerated anymore. There is too much waste and inefficiency. And as your government, and it was signed up to by ours as well, so I'm not making any difference between them, ask the hard-pressed taxpayer to pay more stale taxes to support local government. We simply refuse to look at the efficiency of the spend within local government to see could savings be achieved there first before we put the boot in to those that we represent. And that's not good enough anymore because everyone has to do more for less, we're told. I'll sign up to that, but I'm asking everyone within the service here to sign up to it because it's appalling what is happening and it's not acceptable anymore. And I commend Deputy Murphy for his contribution. He is one of the newer members on the Public Accounts Committee who diligently goes through his work every single week, presents out of his own sweat, his own approach to questions, his own analysis of the spend, and shows neither fear nor favour in relation to those that he's questioning because he's working in the interest of the taxpayer. His contribution this morning was accurate. It was non-political. And I said that we should have a free vote in this House on this issue. Because it's not about politics. It's about the spend of taxpayers' money and us w w acting properly as watchdogs for the taxpayer. And I would say to Deputy Murphy and the other newer, younger members on that committee, do not be disappointed by the fact that the bill was refused. Do not be frustrated or angry by it. Because, as I wrote in the book, the House always wins. But neither be put off by it and approach it in a determined fashion, the reform that is necessary in this House and on that committee. Because you are representing a new generation of politicians in this House. You are representing an electorate out there that looks in cynically at this House. And unless you continue 
the reform programme that you have outlined this morning, that cynicism will simply grow and we will lose respect. So a lot of that weighs on your shoulders. And I believe that you have the ability to do all of that in terms of your contributions. And I hope that you do keep up that work. And you're a member of the Fine Gael party. But that doesn't mean that you're in a Fine Gael straitjacket. The party will benefit by thinking like yours. And I believe that this system and the electorate out there will benefit also. So I, I commend you for your contribution to this debate and I urge you uh, to continue on in it. In terms of the audit of, of local government, the 3.6 billion euro was mentioned. That fiasco that we had some time ago. Had the CNAG been able to audit that particular figure, it wouldn't have happened. But what happened after that? The Department of Finance said they were going to carry out two reports last October. We're still waiting, still waiting for those reports. But we got a perf perfectly reasonable answer from the Central Statistics Office at no cost. And it was an answer that was accurate, it was clear in what happened, it was understood, and it would have been accepted by the PAC. The Department of Finance is paying consultants to carry out the report. When, in the name of God, are we going to apply some common sense to the system? Because it's frustrating everybody. Lastly, account Corlam, I want to refer to the Friday sittings. I've come up here once or twice on Friday just to see, and I've listened to the Secretary General of the House here give his report to the Public Accounts Committee. A lot of effort went into preparing that bill. A lot of consideration in terms of other members. Not for me, but for them. The reform now that's put out there by people like me is almost not about now for us. It's about preparing the way for a new style of politics, a new way of managing our affairs. And if we do that, we'll get the respect of people. I believe in debate in this House. And I believe that the Friday should be used far more extensively. I think seven people addressed this House this morning on what I believe is a really important issue for the country and for accountability. The cost, I understand, is €90,000 for a Friday sitting. What an appalling waste of money if we continue to ignore what really needs to be done on Friday, which is proper sittings, proper reform, proper consideration of a bill. With no fear from the government side, this bill could have been sent to a committee to be dealt with. It's not duplication. It's nothing to do with that. In fact, a lot of what you said in your speech, Minister, is the view of some senior civil servant is not a political answer. It is simply glossing over what is a really serious problem in terms of our public accounts and our approach to it. It says so much about this House, so much about this House, that this bill was refused further consideration. And I deeply regret that. Thank you. Um, I now must put the question that the bill be now read a second time. The Chafti Athar Hev and Parishkina Abdis Thar. The Chafti Athar and Athrina Abdis Neil. Sheenam Gwil Buta Aaron Gesht. Botal. Um, the division uh, is therefore postponed until immediately after the order of business on Tuesday next in accordance with standing order 117A4. Thank you. Tá an dáil ar atlóg a dí a dáil clóg de marcha creation.